Got a long ways to walk right now. Probably another two or three miles. And if you're new to this channel, you don't know I tore my Achilles about six months ago. So I'm on the mend, it's healing nicely, but just to be safe, I'm gonna put this brace on. There we go, that'll make me feel a little bit more comfortable on the long walk. I'm gonna do this video kind of long form today. Not a short 20 minute video, I'm gonna do a little bit longer today. About a one day or two day trip, I don't know for sure yet, but camping trip, going for trout. Got all the kind of essential stuff here on the outside. Flint stick, a little spoon, water bottle, bear spray, life straw. This is a beaconing device and you can use this on a trail or in the water. Push the button, it'll send the GPS coordinates to somewhere, someplace, I hope, and they'll notify your loved ones that you put on here. It's got a little antenna, flip that up. And there's a button to press for distress. Hopefully I won't have to use that. couple things. As I walk, there's about 50 mosquitoes trailing me. So luckily, luckily, very luckily, I got some bug spray. And I'm going to spray this the heck all over me. Get these damn mosquitoes away from me. Woo! <coughs> Another thing that I'm thinking, is that as I walk down this trail, as I get farther and farther from people and from roads and civilization, I might come across a bear. It is springtime and uh, a lot of the snow has melted, so a lot of these bears are probably out from hibernation. At least that's what my mind is telling me. So now is a good time to put my bear spray right here in case I need to grab it quick. But instead of just relying on this, hoping that it works, why don't we test it out? There's a safety clip right here. Pop that off and spray, that's it. I mean, it should be quick like that, you know? You don't want to get in a situation where you got to fumble with a bunch of stuff. Off, spray, that's it. All right? So the thing you got to say when you come across a bear, get out of here, bear! Damn, that doesn't even shoot very far, huh? About 20 feet? All right, one more blast. I don't want to waste it. Damn. That's for close encounters right there. That ain't far at all. I'm about to have a fun time just blasting this all over the place and now I have no more left when a bear comes by. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. I'll keep that with me right here on my backpack. I'm using a fly rod today, but I brought two rods. The fly rod and I brought a spinning rod just for in case the fly rod breaks or whatever reason. And I've only got one liter. This is a nine foot liter of 4X and that equates to 6.4 pound test. It's a nine foot liter, it tapers from a large size to a small profile. That small profile is 6.4 pound test. Now when you're fly fishing, you don't wanna break into your leader too often. So they use what's called a tippet. And this is 5X tippet, which is, uh, five pound test so five pound to 6.4 if something breaks the tippet's gonna break this is my fly box here I'm gonna start with the best thing I know the thing on top right here right there those are zebra midges I got a bunch more down here too as you can tell I'm highly fond of zebra midges I also know that there's a ton of black ants here and every time I open up a trout they've got ants in their stomachs so I'm gonna tie a black ant on top a zebra midge on the bottom and a split shot or two, maybe about eight inches above both of those. Attaching the leader to the fly line, and that's just a loop to loop connection. Leader through the fly line, line through the leader. Look how thick the loop end is compared to the thin end of the actual leader. This is what you're gonna be fishing off of. Straight through the loop, pull it down. Feed it back through and don't kink it up. There's your loop to loop connection. Now I wanna give my leader a, a nice, nice pull. Just straighten it out, you don't want it to be bowed up and curling around when you're fishing. Warm it up in your hands and that'll straighten it right out. Now I'm doing a triple surgeon's knot. This is going to be probably too hard to see. 
but I'm looping it over and going through three times. That's triple. So doing that triple hand surgeon's knot, connecting the leader to the tippet also has another purpose. There's a knot there, so you, when you put your little BB size split shots, it prevents it from sliding down onto your line. So about 14 inches below my BBs, there's my ant. And about 10 inches below that is my little zebra midge. So we're gonna kill them right now, let's do it. One other thing before we start, I'm going to use, uh, it's nice and clear, I'm gonna use this white, white bobber, white indicator, whatever you wanna call it. And I really like these because they say you're supposed to set the depth of your indicator about one and a half times the depth of the water. So this is so easy to slide around. You take this cap off, there's a little notch that you put your line in, twist it on tight, there's a little rubber piece below it, and that's gonna keep it in the same place. Now if you need to adjust depths, just loosen it, and pull your leader up or down. It's really, really convenient compared to a lot of other indicators out there. Let's do this. One thing that I've done in the past that I think was a mistake, I wasn't weighing my, my lines heavy enough. So I'm not afraid to put extra split shots on if I need to. It's gonna be fun, baby. Let's catch some fish now. See if anybody's home. Oh, that was fish. Was that a fish? Let's see again if he comes back. Nope, that's bottom. That's okay. It's what we want. We want to tick bottom every once in a while. Just not letting my line drag. That's all I'm doing. Watching that indicator as it goes down. Keeping a drag-free drift. That indicator is going to go down soon. Now this area has a lot of algae growing. So sometimes your hooks will drag on that algae and it'll pick it up. So just give it a check every once in a while. Make sure everything is still clean. Got one. Got one. Woo! Nice little brown trout. Yeah, baby. Oh, no, that's a rainbow. Sweat my hands. Actually, man, this is really slippery right here. I'm about to slip in. There he is. That might be a rainbow. Got him on the ant. No, that's a rainbow. Little rainbow. Got him on the ant. Beautiful little rainbow trout. Ooh. Ooh. I hooked myself bad. Jesus, that's some sharp shit. Ouch, that's never happened before. I just hooked myself bad. Woo-wee. Yeah, that's a nice little fish. Nice little wild rainbow. There he goes. Damn, hooked myself. Ooh, right in the finger. Look at that. Ouch. All right, I'm going to try to push the barb down and out. Down and out, quick. Ooh, that hurts. Man, a little karma for me, huh? Ouch. Oh, got it. Ouch, damn. That's a sharp hook. Hey, when you get hooked, it feels good to know that it's sharp. But that's what that fish bit on. Black ant right there. Ooh, a little blood. A little blood never hurt, it's all right. Nice little guy, nice little guy. Let's get back out there. Hell yeah. Right where I thought he would be. Looks like my depth is correct. Now we just gotta catch a keeper. Ooh, there's a little nibble. You kind of see what I'm doing here? See where there's a rock and it's kind of calm? That's where I can drift it. All this white water, that's good for the trout because there's a lot of oxygen in the water. Over here, there's a lot of oxygen in the water, but there's also a lot of places for the trout to stay and protect themselves. They don't expel too much energy staying behind this calm spot. They just wait and watch the food drift on by. Now, something about fly fishing that there's a big misconception of is you got to get really good at, at casting behind you, in front of you and all that stuff. But the biggest thing, the most commonly cast that thing that you're going to do is the roll cast. So you just roll it up and give it a flick and that's it. That's so simple. Anybody can do it. Seriously, anybody can do that. And that's about 90% of the casts you're going to make a lot of the times in these small streams. So I'm casting it out. I'm stripping in a little bit towards me, lifting it up so no line is in the water. If that indicator goes down, I'm setting the hook downstream because the fish is facing upstream and I want to set it into its mouth. Now as it goes downstream, I can let a, let a little bit of line out. Let a little bit of line out. As long as it's not dragging, I'm good. There's a fish. Got another one. Just a baby. 
another little baby. Let's see what he bit on this time. Oh, he bit on the ant also. Let's be careful not to get hooked this time. Get a little water on our hands. You see those paw marks on it? That's how you know it's not developed yet. Let's just make things a little bit safer. Grab this forcep, grab the hook, and tip it over. See you later, buddy. Hey, not bad. Two fish, about 15 minutes. I'm gonna keep walking, got another couple miles or so. I didn't bring any water with me, so I'm using this life straw and just gonna get a little drink right here first before I head on. This is a brand new one, so how you use it, get a little water in it, let it sit, submerge it for, I think they say 10 seconds. Now drink as you will. Man, as I take a sip, I can just feel my whole body relax. I'm in a very vulnerable position right now. This is how a gazelle feels when he's drinking at the river by the alligators and crocodiles. Ah, who's there? Anybody there? Anybody here? All right, when you're done, just blow it out. It's nice that this trail is wide open so I don't have to pack up my rod every time I'm walking. So this path here, it winds close to the river, goes away from the river. So every time I get a chance to take a look, I'm gonna take a look. I like the look of that. Right along there, it's pretty deep. Got a good chance for a 15, 16 inch trout right there. All the way down to the bottom here. Oh, a little tiny guy just jumped. All right, I'll be a little bit more careful this time. I think this hole is so good that it holds at least a couple decent sized fish. Oh, there's a fit. oh no. That was a leaf. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Right here, right here, right here, right here. This looks good, this looks good. Come on, baby. There he is, there he is. Told you. Oh, damn it. Just a little guy. Just a little guy. But there could be bigger ones where this guy came from. Man, they love that ant today. Get the hook out of your mouth. Damn, they really want that ant. All right. This is a great little spot to learn how to fly fish because these drifts are nice. Right here on the seam, baby. Come on up for this. Come on up for it. Come on over for it. Nope. There he is. That's a good one. Oh, that's stuck nicely. That's a good one, I think. I can't tell for sure. No, that's a baby. That's just a baby. Oh, a foul hooked him, that's why. Foul hooked him, no wonder. Damn, I could use him as bait, though. Foul hooked a little guy. Felt like a good one. Just foul hooked. What I'm thinking is all the babies are over here, which means the bigger ones are, they have priority and dominance. They're up higher in the feeding lane. Another little guy. Man, bunch of these little guys here. Foul hooked again. I mean, they're coming up for it. They're not taking it with their mouth though. Ha ha, what do you know about that? Yes, I brought two rods. This is a spinning rod. And if you're not comfortable with the fly rod, this is a great way to get some fish. Great way for a beginner to learn also. So I've got a big old worm and I could split this in half, use half of it and just conserve my worms, but I've got a bunch of them, so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna thread this guy through its head and that's where the tougher part of its body is. I don't have a worm threader, but I am gonna go right through the mouth or is this the asshole? I don't know. I mean the butt, sorry. One of the problems with fishing worms though, or live bait, is that a lot of the times the fish will bite it and they'll swallow it, gut hooking it, and you can't release them. And as you've seen, a lot of the fish I've caught today are all small. So I'm just putting them on like a big old clump right there. That's gonna float down the river. I've got two of the larger split shots. I might add another one but I'm gonna give it a try. I think this is gonna work. So you drift casting upstream like this and you're drifting down with the current. Trying not to get snagged. That's the name of the game with this. All right, three big old split shots. This is gonna get me down to the feeding zone. Right there, right in the middle of that stream. Tighten her up a little bit and bounce bottom all the way to the end. Man, no bites on the worm. That actually makes me feel better about the flies. 
All right, we'll keep at it with the fly rod. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Came across this nice pool here. I don't know, I think there's money. Another small one, damn. This is actually the biggest of the day, believe it or not. A little wild rainbow trout. All right, see you, little guy. If I could catch a 12-incher, a 12-incher, I'll keep and eat. That's all I want. All right, let's give the worm a try. This is fly compared to worm. Look at that little thing squirm. I got three split shots on. I might tie another one, but this should be easy pickings. I can see the other fish swimming around too. Oh, missed him. Okay, I'll let him eat it. I'll let him eat it. There he is, little guy. Oh, no? Yeah, little guy. Not too little. Oh man, a couple of these, that might have me a little meal. That's a meal. That might be 11 inches. I said 12. Couple of these. Gonna be good. He swallowed the hook. He's done for anyway. I'll take him. I'll take him. Let's see if I can get the hook out. If I can get the hook out, maybe I'll release him. If he could swim away on his own accord, I'm gonna let him go. Looks like he's gonna do just fine. They say actually holding them in the current. Yeah, he's gone, he swam away. Ah, I let him go. So tempting. But that was the first cast with the worm, so that's just why, I don't know, I'm kinda confident in the worm. So I'm gonna do it again. What do you guys think gets the most bites? Worms, or flies, or eggs, trout eggs, salmon eggs, something else? I'm thinking, man, you can't just you can't go wrong with worms. Get a little tub of worms, and that's the ticket. That's the ticket to some trout. Just keep in tension with it, letting it drift down. There's a little bite. There's a little bite. Little bite. Oh, yeah, little bite. Little baby. Not trying to get that guy. Come on, I'm trying to keep it down low so a bigger fish can bite. There's another little bite. Got, ooh, that one's good. That one feels like it's got some weight on it. No, uh, pretty small still. Swimming right towards me. Actually, he's bleeding out. God dang it. Damn it, that's the reason why I don't like to use worms. Fish dies, bleeds out. And if it's a small fish, you just kill it, you know? It sucks. There's no way he's gonna survive, which really, I don't like doing that. Probably lost a lot of blood already, so I'm just gonna kill him and then eat him. Cut the spinal cord, he'll bleed out right here. I think the best thing to do is if you're gonna fish the worm, just fish it barbless. I'm gonna pinch this barb down all the way, that way it can slide right out. You know, if I, get, if I got stabbed in the finger earlier with a barbless hook, it wouldn't have hurt if it was barbless. You know, it would just slid right out. So I'm gonna do that instead. I feel better about that. Well, if this doesn't work, I'm not gonna fish the worm at all anymore. I pinched the barb down, and uh, now I'm not gonna let him eat it. I'm just gonna set the hook whenever I feel a bite. Oh yeah. All right, right in the lip. See, I didn't, I didn't let it, uh, I didn't let him eat it. Man, I'm fighting these tiny fish like they're monsters. Little guy coming up for it as I reel it in. Right on the lip. I'm really surprised all the spots that I've stopped, I haven't caught in anything bigger than the one I let go earlier. I thought for sure I'd have one here. Well, I'm just walking along trying to find my way back to the trail. A lot farther than I thought it was, but this kind of freaks me out a little bit. Look how that all the pine needles slid down on this rock. That wasn't me, and that doesn't happen naturally. So what do you think did that? Maybe a bear? Probably a bear? Yeah, 
Sounds about right. And I'm just walking around carrying this fish, a little bear treat. Fingers crossed I stay safe out here. I believe the trail is over here. Man, I don't remember, honestly. Damn it. This way? Gotta start marking landmarks and stuff. Oh yeah, okay, there it is. There's a bucket. I remember that bucket. Ooh. Slipping. Had a little bit of an eerie feeling earlier just now. Two trails, one up, one down. I'm gonna go over to the main one. Been walking for another 45 minutes, going uphill still. Not sure when this is gonna head back down to the river. Still got my little fish. Half an hour later, still don't hear the sound of the river. Really hoping this backtracks towards it. Rigor mortis has set in, fish has dried out. My arms are numb. I'm gonna start looking for a place to camp now. I hear the river, fortunately, but there's a lot of standing water here, which means this place will be infested with mosquitoes. And I am not trying to stay by that. So I'll probably hike another half mile or so. Found the river. All right, there's a nice pool over these rocks. Jumping again, hell yeah. All right. Let's do this. Got a worm on here. It's nice and deep. A lot of oxygenated water, as I like to say. Casting out, sitting down, catching fish, hopefully. Oh, one came up and got it. Oh my gosh, he came up from the bottom, man. That's a nice trout, dude. I hope he stays on, because this is marvelous now. Wow, he came up from the bottom and bit, and bit it. Maybe I was getting bites from the fly rod. You gotta bring him down, let him go downstream a little bit. Oh man, he might come off. I'm gonna lift him up. I'm gonna lift him up one time. Come on up, baby. Woo! Yeah, he's barely hooked too. Oh, he's barely, barely hooked. Look at that. See that? I was reeling it in. He came up to the top and ate it. I'm gonna keep that one. I'm gonna eat him. That's lunch and dinner. Right here, I'm gonna cut cut his head all the way to the spine. Once you cut his spine, he's done for. He'll bleed out. And that's, that's lunch, man. That's pretty cool. He came up out of nowhere. I mean, yeah, it's a small fish, but I got the other one that's small too. So this one, in combination with that one, that'll be a good meal. Am I boring you with all this fishing? Don't worry, we're gonna get to the cooking part soon. I just want to catch one more. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. I know there's fish here. All right, putting the bobber up a little bit higher. I mean, yeah, you call it an indicator, you can call it a bobber. Damn it, it's a bobber. Come on. Let's see, we got no bites on the fly rod. Let's see what happens when we throw the worm out. What do you think? I think we're gonna get a bite. But is that cheating? I mean, that's why some rivers have no live bait, right? Because they just catch fish so much more. But if it's allowed and you're trying to catch a meal, you might as well bring some worms. Worms or flies? Let's see. I gotta say, every time I don't get bit when I use bait, compared to using the fly rod, feels good. You can see I'm walking up to a spot. And if you guys know trout fishing, you know that spot looks damn good. And the reason why I keep walking over here, I passed up about five or six spots and kept on walking because I can see that there's some, some waterfalls, there's some white water, and it's coming down from a pretty high area. And when it comes down fast like that, that's when it opens up a big pool. When there's a lot of rainfall, when there's a lot of ice, when all that stuff melts, it comes down here hard. And there's a lot of current and it washes out a lot of this stuff. So when the water is finally a little bit lighter like this, you get some deep, deep holes. And there could be some big fish in there. 
I really want to get onto that rock. Damn, I don't think there's a way for me to get over there though. It's just too high over here. Look at this boulder. Unless I go over the top and come down, but I don't think that's possible here. It's just too sloped. Climb under there, climb over the top. I don't think I could do that. I can't get this fly out here with this bobber and all this stuff on it. So I'm putting it away and I'm gonna tie a woolly bugger on it. That's a streamer and it's one fly which I can cast farther. See that there? My little woolly bugger. So I'm gonna give this a shot down on this rock because I got a little place where I can cast behind me. If all goes well, we're gonna have a nice fish on our hands. Man, I don't know about this. Try one back cast. It's just not deep enough. I can't get it out far enough, damn it. Ah, I gotta use the freaking spinning rod. Ah, oh, I got snagged, that's exactly what I knew would happen. Why'd I even try that, damn it. Yeah, damn it, I really wanna get out there with this thing. If I could only get onto that rock, but even that I can't get to. This is not, this is hopeless. I can't do this. Damn it. Oh, pains me. It pains me not to be able to do this right now. This is the finale of the fishing part because it's about to go down. I'm about to catch a fish and I'm going to eat them with this worm. Wish I didn't have to do it this way, but it's got to be. Three split shots, casting out to the deep water. Boom. Oh, how it feels good to cast. And now we wait. I didn't get it as far enough as I really wanted to. Let me try again. I just need to get it out into the current. Oh, there's one following it right now. I could throw a cast master out here too. All right, here we go. Deeper water. Oh yeah, that's money. This is money. Come on, baby. There he is. There's a little guy. Oh, it came off. Dang. That was a decent sized one. That was probably the biggest one so far. Come on now. Right there. I could probably throw on extra weight. I think I can. Current is still fast underwater even though it doesn't look like it. They really like the retrieve. They're biting it as I really didn't see like that. Yeah, baby. Woo. Let's go. That's the biggest so far, I think. Oh, he wanted it too. Swallowed it. Swallowed it. All right, I'm gonna eat those three. Those three are good. And actually, I'm gonna throw on a spinner because they're gonna bite. They like it. I don't know, they like that. They, they like to follow the worm on the way in, so they're gonna like the spinner too. Sorry, man, but you are dinner and lunch. That one's the young one I caught. You can still see the paw marks, really young. That one's the one I just caught. A little bit of a darker color. And that's the one I caught earlier. Both darker colors, both wild rainbow trout. So I'm, I'm not gonna gut hook any more fish. No more of that. What I'm gonna do, tie on that spinner. This is what I'm changing it to. Panther Martin, little rainbow trout pattern. But the thing with this is, I don't think it's, it's heavy enough to get down deep enough. So I'm gonna uh, put on an extra weight. This is what I got right here. Five split shots. These are the big ones. This is probably half an ounce or more going to a little spinner tied directly onto the line. Now the reason why I added these split shots because I want to get down deep and this light little thing doesn't have the capacity to do that. They like following today. Oh man, way over there. That's in the money spot right there, baby. Watch, watch this. Oh, damn. Come on, come on. You don't want to do it too slow either or else it'll get snagged. Remember, you're going with the water. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, don't act like you're shy. Don't even act like you're shy. There's a nice one following it right now. Got a little bit of seaweed in it, so it wasn't spinning right, that's why. But there was still a nice one following it. Oh man, it's on, it's over for them. I'm sorry, Trout, but you guys are done for. It's over for y'all, it's over for y'all. It's over for y'all, I'm telling you, right now, it's over. Every cast, I'm gonna get one. Fish on. All right, little guy. We're gonna weed through the little guys. Good thing about the spinner, they'll get hooked in the mouth. All right, stop, stop, stop. Let's get the forceps out. 
Don't want to hurt you more than I need to. Damn, there's too much, too much of that algae here. Excuses, excuses. All right, all right. All right, y'all, it's 520. I'm trying to get back to this one campsite that I passed by earlier. It's about a 40 minute walk, I think. So I'm gonna try to hightail it out of here before it gets dark so I've got some time to cook some food as well as set up camp. This is it, camp. Camp for the night, still got enough daylight. Now I don't wanna cook right here, right next to my fire, right next to where I'm gonna be camping. I'm gonna go down to the river, clean these fish, and find a nice spot to cook down there. You all know what's on the outside of my bag. I, by the way, I love this bag. It's like basically a checked or carry-on bag to go on the airplane, except it carries all my camera equipment, my food, my cooking supplies, my fishing supplies. Let's open her up. I love how it just folds open like this too, so you can, boom, reveal everything. So that's what I got, my sleeping bag, insulator, I got a tent here, my worms, my cooking stuff, a jacket. I want to show you this. This is really special to me and check it out. This is something new that I've got in stock. I'm going to be doing two runs of this, one right now and one during November and December. But this is a special hand-drawn surf perch from the NorCal from West Coast. Like, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Fisherman's life chasing the sand crab on a hook. Look at that, look at the details. That's a hand-drawn thing by uh, an artist named Trong, who lives in Florida, who's actually moving to the Bay Area. His Instagram is visually art design. Check the description. That's on the back, and that's the front. That's the front of the hoodie. A little fisherman's life. So I got these black hoodies, black t-shirts with the same design, and charcoal long sleeves with the same design. Check the website, fishermanslife.net, for this limited time offer. God, that sounds so sales pitchy. Anyway, yeah, check it out, two runs. Time to cook some lunch, dinner, dinner, probably dinner. Well, nothing too special that I'm doing with these fish right now. All I'm doing is, is uh, cleaning them up, getting the guts out. Now, the main thing that I'm interested in is finding out what they've been eating. Now, it's almost always something black. Can we find out what's in this guy's stomach? And of course, it's a bunch of bugs. A bunch of ants. More ants. Looks like a caddis in there. Looks like some worms. Does this fish have parasites? Look at that. That's a parasite, right? Interesting. A rinse, keeping the skin on. Just cutting that bloodline out. If you want to eat trout and you're eating it with the bones on, one thing you can do, minimize the amount of bones you'll have to deal with after. Take its fin on the bottom and just rip it off. There's some bones in there. You take that out, you won't have to deal with them anymore. Same on the other side. Get those bones out. Now this bottom piece is gonna be all boneless and the ribs will just pull right out. Well, these three fish is enough for me. That's for sure. Two of them, that would've been pushing it. That would've been close. The meat on that one looks nice. The meat on that first one, it's a little bit mushy now. It's been sitting out most of the day. And that one looks good, so. All right, let's eat, baby. Oh man, being out here all day sure does not make me want to cook something fancy. And because I don't want to, and because I don't have to, I ain't gonna. Oh, 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 oh. Main ingredient. I love this little burner, because you don't need a lighter. You just turn it on and flick it. Boom, whoa, almost singed off my eyebrows. Oh man, I'm gonna, I'm hungry. I'm so hungry, y'all. Ah, okay, let's turn this down. Let's get a nice low heat. So that little guy, he's so small, he'll fit in their hole. I'm gonna cut his tail off. And these will fit in halfway. I mean, this rock is like clean enough, you know. Same with this one, halfway. All right, butter's heated up already. Now I just brought something simple. I just mixed together some salt and pepper in here. So easy, I could just grab it and sprinkle it on. Keep an eye out for anybody watching me. I did pass by a group of people and they were shooting guns and stuff, but that's all right. 
kind of normal to expect that, I guess. All right, a little bit of salt and pepper, not too much. Put them right in the pan. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're about to be eating now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Think about how poor this meal is prepared. Like all it is is the fish and some butter, right? Think about that. And think about if you actually took the time to do something right. If you had some rice, like some rice aroni, the San Francisco treat, or if you had, I don't know, something, some pasta or something to go with this. But this is just as basic as you can get it. Just some salt, and pepper, and butter, man. Butter. Might need a little bit more. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just doing a nice slow heat, poached in butter, you know what I mean? Go rinse my hands off. Get me a spoon. Let's give her a flip and see how she's looking. Oh yeah. Cook it on a low heat. It gets nice and brown and crispy. Don't burn it. Don't turn it up too high. If you gotta, just keep your pan off of it. I mean, that should say it all right there. A little bit of golden brown trout goodness. Oh, look at that skin. Look at that skin. Ho oh. ho 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 Couple of cool things about trout. They cook fast and when they're done, you don't have to remove all of the meat. You can take out the spine and just watch this. If you can get the spine out, usually the pin bones, they stick into fish, right? But not for trout, not for trout. Look at that, it comes right off. I could shake it off. I don't even need to peel it. I could just shake it off. See the pin bones and the ribs? pin bones and ribs out even though these pin bones are so small you could eat them if you wanted to but that's one all right here's the next one just peel her back pin bones come out now you got a nice flat piece of meat same thing on this side nice piece of meat no bones baby it's like the predator ripping out someone's spine i'm not going to be doing too much talking i'm just going to be doing a lot of enjoying you have to keep the skin. You have to. You cannot toss the skin on a trout. Please do not do that. Delicious. Simple, yet satisfying. If you ever asked yourself, should you come out here and try this? The answer is yes. That was good, but I'm not done yet. We got the tails. How you make this really good? You make sure the skin is lightly brown, golden brown. If it's not, it's gonna be kind of slimy and kind of, uh, I don't wanna try this again, but if it's golden brown, it's good, but you can't burn it. So don't get the heat too high. Make sure you got enough butter in there so it cooks in the butter. Your butter is the cooking medium. It's not the heat, it's not the pan, it's the butter. If you guys want anything that I'm talking about, I'm not sponsored by anyone but if you want check out the description and i'll leave the links to some of this stuff down there i feel satisfied right now this is a good meal i can honestly say those three fish did not go to waste and here's mother nature's sponge also toilet paper clean as a whistle All pine needles, always good kindling. Kindling and tinder. Lights up nicely if it's dry. Oh, found a bunch of pine sap on a tree. Let's see if this will ignite. How about this stuff? There's a bunch of loose, I don't know what in the world it is, but I'm thinking it can hold a flame. Damn it, I should have 
been finding kindling on my whole way over here. I found a bunch of dandelions, but no, uh, I didn't pick any up. And now it's kind of like a test. I have a lighter, I have some paper. I can use a lot of things to make a fire, but it's kind of like a test for me a little bit to see if I can make my own kindling with this wood right here. I had a little spark and I don't want to waste my flint stick too. You know, like if I were really out here, this is a valuable tool. If I don't have this, I can't make fire. All right, while I still have a little bit of light, I'm gonna go try to find some, some dandelion bushes or something, something that I can use as tinder. Something's going down fast. What about moss? Would that work? A little bit of moss? I'm trying to find some fluffy bush. Some sort like some cotton flower type thing. Not having any luck though. Man, that would be horrible if I was really out here like this and I needed a fire for whatever reason and the sun was setting on me really fast like this. I'm trying to think what else could I use besides like a little flower type thing. Maybe these guys, maybe those guys, if they're dry enough, they'll ignite some seeds. Old Coors Light can. If I find a piece of paper, that could work too. Here's a really dry piece of wood. I can put tinder and kindling on top of here to keep it dry and ready to ignite when I try again. All right, let's see if this stuff will work. Bunch of dry little seeds. A few more dried seeds. Let me take them off the stem here. Just stack it all up. Hopefully I can get a spark out of this. I don't know about this uh, moss. And since I have it, I'm gonna cut off a little piece of this string here and use that too. That's probably what's gonna ignite the most, honestly. A little piece of thread here. And dry, like cotton. And just fray it out a little bit. All right, y'all, I need some help on this. What can I do better? I'm sucking right now. Well, all right, that's it. God dang it. I got some toilet paper, just in case I needed to do the business. That's one thing I gotta be more aware of next time. Get some kindling before I, get some kindling as I walk around. So important. There we go. Some of these pine needles to ignite. Just build it slowly. Don't want it to die. Come on, light up, light up, light up. Don't drown me now, baby. Oh no. Oh, that don't look good. All right, that looks good. Oh, geez, that took too long. Oh. What a day. It's probably not the best time to talk about this, but I'm really curious what you guys think, and especially if you have any stories. If you do, please, please, I really want to hear about it, and I'm sure a lot of other people want to too. The thing I'm thinking about is, are there mountain people? Are there people who run away from civilization, run away from socialized life, run into the mountains and live out here full time. I feel like there is. I've never come across anyone, but I've heard stories. So I really want to hear, are there any stories that you know of? The more I talk about it, the more I'm going to freak myself out. But I'm really curious. Are there mountain people that you've seen, heard of, or encountered 